Hey there everyone, this is my mom. For the first time on my YouTube channel, I'm going to interview her. Why? That's because we have 20,000 subscribers and I'm making a special video for you today that's a bit different than all my other videos, which is an interview with my mom. Not just that, we're also going to cook a Dutch traditional recipe of erten soup or pea soup. Let's start the video. Yes, it is true. Me and my mom are going to cook something in this video. A traditional Dutch recipe that dates back to the 16th century. Ladies and gentlemen, so this is how it works. I asked all of my patrons and sponsors who helped me crowdfund this channel to submit questions to me, which I shall ask my mother in this special celebration video for 20,000 subscribers. Now, I have the questions stored here inside my head and I'm randomly going to pull one out and then interview my mom. So, I guess we can start with the first one, yes? Okay. First, I have one from um, a sponsor called Steven. Steven, thank you very much for supporting my channel. He uh, looks like he sent me four questions. First question is, I should introduce you. Her name, by the way, is Marjolein in Dutch. Marjolein. Marjolein. Dear Marjolein, what do you think of Bart's hobby? I love it. I simply love it. Every aspect of it. And it intrigues me every day. And it fascinates me because every day is new. Uh, I'm discovering a lot. And he does it now for many, many years. And I learn a lot as well. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Not everybody's mom supports their hobbies. So, yeah, I guess I, I am lucky. Next question. What do you think of moths and butterflies yourself? I love moths and I love butterflies. Uh, I can see so many different species and because I learn a lot from Bart, I know a lot more from coloring. I know about uh, the attraction to the light in, in, from moths. And sometimes I read articles about moths and butterflies. And I'm going to uh, take a look at butterflies myself all the time. Well, see, my mom is uh, very positive. Yeah, I am. When I was a young kid, she always encouraged me, so I guess I have my mom to thank for all of this as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, there's uh, two more questions from uh, Steven, who I will have to open my vest, it's uh, warm here. Okay, it's a light, <coughs> I think. So, yeah, it's a uh, light, probably. Steven also asked, have you always supported Bart in his hobby? 100% and always. Well, I can confirm that she always did. It's uh, good to have supportive parents, otherwise it would be difficult to do this. Because it's a pretty expensive and time-consuming hobby. And if my parents were not supporting the things I do, I don't think I would be able to do any of this, to be honest. I mean, I still live with my parents. We have a pretty big house uh, in a green area. And if I had to survive by myself and pay rent, etc., and had to work full-time to do all of this, I wouldn't be able to breed so many insects. So that's a concern for the future. Um, the last question from Steven. How do you feel about Bart traveling to distant countries for his work or hobby? Well, for example, Cambodia, where I work. Mm. Well, in life it's really important that you travel as much as you can. Because you have to learn from other cultures, other peoples, how all people in the world think how they live together and respect their culture. And for me it's very important to talk to a lot of people. And you know people uh, how they think by how they treat nature and climate. And I really love the idea of traveling a lot. Uh, of course it takes a lot of money to travel so you have to work hard when you want to travel and it helps when you know people who invite you. Indeed. And yeah. it's all thanks to YouTube. Yeah. Because uh, the reason I worked in Cambodia is, uh, well, people found my website and my channel and they hired me to research moths in Cambodia. So it's true I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to afford it myself. Thank you, Steven, for your support on Patreon. It means a lot to me. My channel is demonetized. 
And here we have still a whole head full of questions. So wow. I'm, I'm just randomly, yeah, this is going to take some time. It's okay, it's okay. So let's, uh, let me just blindly take here another one. Ah, today we have um, a question from a girl named Rachel. Okay. Now you remember when I went to London once? Yeah. That's where I met Rachel. Oh, okay. I've Hi, Rachel. I, I know her in real life. Yeah. Thank you for submitting your question, Rachel. She asked me, I was thinking, what was her opinion on you taking a very unconventional route into entomology via YouTube rather than a university degree? Yeah, well, when you're born, a lot of uh, parents and a lot of people as well have a path for their children and they all are really the same. You should study, you should have a job from 9 to 5 and act if you're very happy as if you're very happy. And then you have two kids and 2.3 dogs. Uh, well, life is different. And when you really find your happiness and trust in yourself, it's way more important than uh, finding your path through a standard school. Um, studying is my hobby, but also I learn a lot about how people really learn and develop themselves. And this is one way, just look for your passion and really uh, work on your passion in the way that you um, develop yourself as much as you can. And that can uh, be done by courses, by uh, just practicing a lot, by giving uh, yourself into your passion and your hobbies. Yeah, that's a way of living too. I do have to say, I did try to study, and the reason I didn't is simply because I failed. But, yeah, well, you can laugh, it's not funny. <laughs> my mom has to say this. But one of my life goals is still to someday finish a degree. You will! Because YouTube is socially very pleasing, but not very intellectually pleasing, and I would like to do research on insects. You will! I have done research on insects, but I would be able to do much more if I actually had a formal degree. So that would have basically allow me to combine my channel with my professional career. Sorry, I dropped one on the floor. You're very young, huh? Well, yeah. I don't feel young, but I guess. Thank you, Rachel, for your sponsorship and friendship. Let me take here another question. And we have one from Matt. Well, Matt asked me, I would like to ask her how she raised such an awesome song. <laughs> Uh, just by loving him, mainly, and um, by guiding him uh, when there are problems, but also forgiving him when things do not go right. Um, just by loving him, that's all. Okay. Yeah, things go uh, their own way. Thanks for forgiving me. Well, thank you. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are you. I haven't done that much wrong, but uh, thank you, Matt, for your question and sponsorship. Well, that was a short one. Oh, yeah. Short but so simple, right? Okay, let me... That's a lot of questions. Huh? Yeah, no, it's... I think we have like 10 left. Ah. Next one is from uh, somebody named Paulina. Paulina. Now, Paulina is a special person because she has been following this channel since I had less than 2,000 subscribers years ago. I've seen her commenting on my videos a lot. Wow. So, uh, Great she's... Great person. <laughs> she's one of the people who was here since the beginning and she submitted three questions thank you Paulina the first question is some people nowadays underestimate the role of being a mother what would you say to them? Mm. Being, a mo being a mother is really underestimated because it's, you, never, um, you never have off of this job it's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and that for a lot of years and there are moments that you think my child is more important than the things I want for me. And sometimes that's hard. Yes, it is. But um, love is everything that counts in this world. And that's what you get back. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Straight answer. Yeah. Did you like insects before Bart started to be interested in them? Yeah, I did. Um, I love nature in general, but I love insects. Uh, I always draw little bugs and little flies and ants in only black ink. And I love to uh, watch little animals as well. So, uh, yeah, we did it together in the beginning, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can confirm that. 
because uh, I'm not sure why, but I remember when we went on vacation when I was young. Yeah. And uh, well, it was amazing. Mainly it was me and dad. Yeah. But you as well were always looking out for bugs, lizards, small stuff like yeah. that. So that's how it all started out, really. Question number three. Well, what is important is that we draw your attention to the insects. And yeah. then you did it everything yourself. That's true. Yeah. We took over. Question number three. I admire the fact that you have supported Bart during his journey with YouTube and his passions. What would you say to the kids who don't get the same support from their families? Um, just wait, your chance will come. And never stop believing in yourself. So, love the passion you have. Really, passion is something really important also for your brain and learning. Making new pathways. And when your parents aren't into your hobby, just have trust in, in your own life. So, wait for the right moment, but in the, mi in the meantime, um, just keep on uh, doing your hobby. Yeah. Mm. I can confirm that because a lot of young people who watch my channel want to breed moths like me and their parents don't allow it. Yeah. And that's maybe because they don't have enough money or not enough space or their parents, they just don't like insects. Yeah. And it's hard to explain to your parents why you want to do so, such a weird hobby like that. And in that, I think I have an unfair advantage, maybe a privilege even, of having two very supportive parents. I agree. Although... Well, it's we, not snakes and scorpions. Well, yeah, it's butterflies and moths. But, yeah. well, the gist of it is that uh, my advice for those kids as well would be like, it sucks, but if you are under age, you have to listen to your parents. Yeah. And you have to grow up. But when you're my age, eventually, when you will become more independent, you will be free to do whatever you want. I was very lucky to be able to do this from a very young age, because my parents always encouraged me. But of course, your life could be completely different. And my advice is just study hard at school, get a good job, pay for your own house, and then you can breed all the moths in the world. Yes, yeah, it's nice it is language. what it is. Yeah. Thank you, Paulina, for your questions and being yeah. so active in all my communities and channel. Well, but rather than having uh, children and uh, giving them your opinions and we always uh, <clears throat> tell them always to follow rules, it's important that you teach them respect and love uh, and you teach them about nature and people. But in the meantime, please observe your child. What is triggering him and what is his passion or her passion and follow that as a parent. Thank you. Okay, next question. Thank you, Paulina, for your submission. Ah. Here we have one from a patron called Catherine Cook. She asked me, Bart, I have an unbelievably important selection of questions for your mother. Wow. You can feel free to choose which, if any, to ask her. Well, there's four questions. Um, Do you need my glasses? No, 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 there's, I'm reading them. Well, the first one is one that uh, somebody, uh, that Stephen asked before. Do you also love butterflies and moths? Yeah, and my a mom, lot. My mom elaborated that yes, she does like yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, she does like insects in general, not the way I do. But the reason I was doubting for a second is because of the second question. What are some possible transcontinental political effects of a poorly done murder mystery party? There are no effects because it's a party and that's a simulation. Uh, would the word party be left out of this sentence? Then there would be any influence. I think this is more like a joke. It's a linguistic joke, yeah. Leave, leave out the word party and it's correct. I think it's a gag a question. A party is always a party <laughs> between people. Sorry if I don't understand this one, Catherine, but I have the feeling it's like a, a prank or something. No, it's a great question. Your next question is... How, how, do you, how did you hear about your position? Why should we hire you? Well, uh, I really persevere and I never give up and I'm flexible. And I speak my languages and, um, well, interested in a lot of different things. And I'm a good researcher. Well, there you go. Well, have that's it. the answer. The last question is, has Bart ever made you hold a really gross bug? 
If so, did it traumatize you forever? No, I'm never traumatized by any bug because it's living as well. But, uh, well, I've seen a lot of things that amazed me, really, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Like, um, but not bugs. Bugs are lovely. Moths and butterflies and bugs and insects, yeah. they're just great. I'm not traumatized by any spider or, no, never. I do have to say, if I notice somebody is uncomfortable with a certain insect, I don't mm. force people to hold exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, if... Yeah. I mean, uh, if I know somebody is scared of spiders, I don't force them to hold a spider. Exactly. Because believe it or not, it's not going to help them over their fear. If they are comfortable with it, then it could help them. But forcing them will only reaffirm their phobia. So that's yeah. something I avoid doing. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you, Miss nice uh, Catherine, for your sponsorship and your submission. Yeah. Here we go. So we're up for grabs to the next question. Go, 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 go. Well, yes, they are random. Oh, ah. another question, sir. The next, next question is from uh, Rob. Now, Rob is somebody from the United States. Hi, Rob. And uh, Rob is one of my major, major sponsors of this channel. Thank you, Rob. You mean a lot for me and my channel. There's going to be, thanks to you, some very big improvements next year that I'm working on behind the scenes, but we all have to be patient. Because the breeding season is over, it's uh, winter uh, right now, yeah. and we have to wait until 2021 until I can start full-time breeding moths again. So now we're just making videos like these. But Rob asked me, what is the best part about being Bart's mom? Well, that is here. <laughs> That's the best part, that he's always with me. <laughs> and that he's always here and that he's enjoying himself in life and that I learn a lot from him and well I had to name one thing eh? Well you can say multiple things if you like. Uh, well we do a lot of things together but also we leave each other be That's So true. he respects my job, I always work and I respect Bart for his work well, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. We do have good boundaries, I think. Yeah, and we can talk very well together. The reason I don't, I don't feel uh, I'm bad about living with my parents, even when I'm 27, is that they do respect my boundaries. Yeah. So I feel very independent. Your really. privacy. Yeah. Yeah. But you have your own life. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And my own friends and my own work. And we so, talk yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just be honest. And he also asks. What is your favorite photo of yourself and your family and why? Why? Well, we have a lot of photographs I love, but there's one and that's... Um, uh, well, if you want to show the photo, yeah. we, we can show it. We can also show it later. I can put it okay. like in, in screen. Okay, that's okay. So. Just you show the photo to them when I pick. I'll show the I photo think. here, yeah. right now. You have to imagine it. There okay. you go. I'll put it right here. And we had fun in nature, walking through the woods, or yeah, just having fun together with your sister and your father and you. Yeah. Thank you for your question, Rob, and thank you for your sponsorship. Yeah. You uh, you know what you've done for my channel. It's a very major update. Thank you very much, okay. and for your question. So now we will move on to the next one. Da -da 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 -da. Ooh, this is a big one. A lot of questions, so nice. Six questions from one user. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. This is, yeah, this is a big one. It's from uh, Daria. Daria is uh, somebody from when my channel was very small. Used to be my top sponsor for a very long time. Thank you, Daria, for being one of the first persons uh, who supported me a lot through uh, Patreon. And you uh, posted some questions on Facebook, which I have uh, taken for this video. Daria asked me, number one, what do you pester your son about the most? Mm, blocking with, uh, with, oh yeah, blocking the doorway with his big shoes. I come in from work and I open my front door and I stumble about his big shoes, his big nature shoes. And every day I say, please, can you put your shoes a bit no. further away from the door? But every day I forget and he forgets. 
Um, sorry for putting my shoes in front of the door. Well, if that's the worst thing you do. Yeah, that's not so but bad. But I passed through in the middle, yeah. Question number two. Can we have a rough estimate on how many stray caterpillars you have found around the house over the years? Well, I can remember six, but it should be a lot of more. But you, you must be lucky because my sight is going uh, worse. So I think the most caterpillars I don't see anymore. Yeah, yeah her, her eyesight is pretty bad. She needs glasses. <laughs> it's not yeah. a joke. No, it's not uh, a joke, no. So, uh, so maybe you're a lucky one. Yeah. Number three. Is there anyone else in your extended family that is similar to Bart in his focus or passion towards their hobby or career? No, he's unique. But then the other way, uh, I'm very driven and passionate myself for my work and studies. So maybe that's something you did, you learned from me. Uh, on the other hand, um, a lot of people have interest uh, or want to do a hobby um, they really want to do more hours, to spend more hours on that hobby, but they can't because they're, uh, well, they're caged. Caged? Some kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in this world, uh, we should do all things uh, like working, cleaning, and etc. And there's no time for real passionate hobbies. But I think break out, yes, do what you like. That's yeah. true. Number four, what's the craziest thing you've known Bart uh, to do to obtain a species? The oh, craziest thing traveling the whole world, sitting in trains for four or five hours a day just to get one egg, one caterpillar or one photograph, one dried butterfly. Hours and hours traveling, first by bike, going to the nearest train station, then traveling four or five hours by train, coming back on the same day and biking back into through the rain to his home. Well, that's really tough for a little egg or a caterpillar or a butterfly. Yeah, oh. I think I filmed that at one time, yeah. a few times, when I went to find it. It is snow everywhere, yeah. I think it was the yeah. Emblema Purpurina, this marbled, uh, marbled uh, outlet. Yeah. I think there's a video of that me getting that one by train. Yeah. So for the ones who've seen that video. You were frozen, yeah. Number five is Bart. Can we see a Bart baby picture? Bart baby picture. Yes, of course tell you us, can. Tell us what he was like as a I baby. I have thousands. Tell us what he was like as a baby. Well, look. Look at this. Can you see this one? Bart will scan it in for you. Oh God. I love this picture. Oh God. This he is... was always smiling to me. We did so many fun things, really. Look, Bart and me. <laughs>some pictures of him then you but what, what was I like as a baby curious intensely active and curious seeing every little detail in things and just seeing every flower and then bugs and then butterflies but also the fish you know that you had you had fish little fish everywhere in in little jars and observing them and then drawing them wow you can draw very well and you see the little, little details a lot of people miss. Yeah, it was very fun <laughs> having him. Yeah. I'm still a big baby, by the way. So. No, you're <laughs> not. Next question, I suppose. Yeah. Well, we're... Uh, well, that's photos, then. Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay. can... Uh, yeah, I don't have to show them in the video. I can no, just okay. scan them with a photocopier and uh, put them wow. on screen. Wow, that's nice. We have nice. one, two, three, four... We have five, okay. five, five left. Five yeah. left. 
Next one is from Duocat, which is a username on Patreon. Now, if people don't use their real names, I will not reveal them either for your privacy. But uh, Duocat, thank you for your submission. Um, well, the first question, I think we sort of answered that one already, but she asked, has Bard liked insects ever since he was very little? From day one. Yeah. Really from day one. Well, that's exaggerating, but... Well, I think when he started crawling really soon, and then he walked when he was eight or nine months, and then as soon as he walked, he's gone. Nature, animals, little, little animals, and he saw everything. He really bent over, stopped walking, bent over to touch a very, very little bug. And every little fly he saw, also bees and bumblebees, and you ran after them. That was, yeah, from youth on. Yeah, from baby on. Yeah. Now the second question is also one we've already answered, but she asked, do you like insects as well? I think, well, yeah, my, my mom, yeah. Yeah. Third time in this video, but hey, that is, uh, of course, well, now people, people are going to submit similar questions, but yes, I can confirm. Yeah, I draw them. I draw a lot of insects. Thank you, Dukat, for your submission and your questions. The next question is by Cat Crobat, which is a username from Patreon. Thank you for your sponsorship, Cat Crobat. She asked me, did she raise you to be so cool? Or were you just born naturally kind-spirited? Also, what is her favorite type of tea? That's two questions. And the third is, what is something you both love doing together? Well, let's start with the first question. Okay. Did you raise me to be so cool and kind-spirited? Well, am I kind-spirited? Maybe that's just an act on YouTube. Yes, he is. I can confirm. But I want to answer that question. Everyone is a phenotype. That means your genetic... Uh, you, you have a, ge a pattern of genes that allows you to develop some um, characteristics. And then there's the surrounding, the, the people you live with and uh, the way you are uh, treated when you go bigger and older and then add it it's a phenotype. So, you always were very kind, but it helps when you have a very nice life and people let you be who you are. That's true. I don't think I have any big drama in my life. No. I mean, I was... Well, when there is some drama, we talk about it. Or yeah, we, but we you know, some, some people have a hard life, you know, yeah. they, they have abusive parent, abusive brother, they're in debt. They, I don't know, they have prob legal problems yeah. with the police or they use drugs, they have bad friends, they have a toxic family. I don't have any of that. No. My life is very vanilla. I've never lost somebody like who is very dear to me. I never had a, a death in my family. Yeah. All my best friends and me are still on good terms. We never had something. I mean, there, of course, there are small issues like, for example, Sometimes I struggle to be independent. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, but that's not really a major problem that will negatively well, influence my life or at least turn me into a toxic person. Well, every person meets some uh, really uh, bad issues in his life and also your life uh, will have those things. But then you know how uh, to deal with it because you have learned to talk. And you have learned to think uh, with all kinds of uh, nuance. And you can reflect on things. And you know sadness and being angry belongs to life. And so also when something really bad happens, you know how to manage. I, I trust that. Yeah. Okay. You've learned that. Maybe I have to experience something bad to be able to... Well, it, it, judge it, it enriches you in a way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Maybe later, who knows? So the next question is, what is your favorite type of tea? That's an interesting question. Oh yeah, I love tea. I'm a real coffee drinker, but I love tea. I love Assam, and I love a really a lot of uh, Earl Grey tea. Also matcha. I love matcha tea, the green tea. And um, jasmine tea, I'm from China. Yeah, I love a lot of teas. Yeah. I know nothing about tea, so I really cannot comment on this. You drink them. Really? Oh. <laughs> when I make it, you drink it. Okay. Well, I have no idea what <laughs> Assam tea is, but... Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. What is something we love doing together? Walking in nature. 
in very nice green uh, zones. And what do we love as well? Uh, watching movies together, I think, and talking about them. Doing groceries so she can buy Monster <laughs> Energy. And, and wine, food. wine, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Talking, you love eating. Yeah. What I cook. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. So we are going to cook the soup. Huh? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. already did. Pea soup. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Um, but what do we love? Um, drawing together, maybe also. Yeah. Mm. We did a course drawing butterflies. And we did a Russian course. Yeah, oh, we do Russian together. We learn Russian. Yes. The Russian language. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I I'm studying Russian language, but my mom joined the Russian course. Yeah. So that's did. something we two did together. Two years ago. Yeah. But it was cancelled because of the coronavirus, so that yeah. sucks. I still want to learn Russian uh, language. We go on. I haven't practiced in a while, yeah. but well, yeah, that, 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 that's a good example, I think. Здравствуйte. Let, let's start Здравствуйte. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's start yeah, it's again. It's a very bad accent, yeah. huh? Learn, yeah. Well, okay, I'm not Russian. So, uh, thank you for your uh, submission and, of course, your sponsorship. Because yeah. my channel is still as demonetized as ever. So, um, next question. Well, we're running out. Two, two left after wow. this. Wow! This question is by Manekicho28. I don't know if I can pronounce your username right. But uh, it's just the username, right? She uh, or he asked me, what is the trick to raising your child to explore, discover and pursue their passions, even if those passions are out of the ordinary? Well, out of the ordinary is only relative. Because who tells you what the rules are? It's almost philosophical. Um, we have a life and the perception of other people is uh, demanding and it's always telling you what you should do. But there's no one really in life that tells you what you should do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, having respect for other people, having respect for nature and animals, that's really the basic. And uh, other things, well, be free as you can. Really be free in your feeling, about your opinions, about what you love and want to do. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your question and sponsorship. Now we have two left. Okay. We are uh, nearing the end of the video. Okay. Then so we have to uh, change the hats at the end. No, it's, it's cool, it's cool. The next one is by uh, Mr. Tallo, who also sometimes goes by the name Josh, but I'll call you Tallo, because it sounds cooler. I Tallo. He asked me, what's the weirdest place you've ever found an insect? Well, I know. It was in the shower. Oh, really? Well, I was showering. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't. Oops. There was something in my eye. You know that feeling. I, there is something, I'm standing here under the shower and something feels weird. And you think there's something watching me. And yes, there was a huge butterfly, you know, names of butterfly, but it was a huge butterfly sitting in the corner of my shower. Yeah. And so I stopped showering and we're calling, but can you take this butterfly out of my shower, please? Yeah, that was the strangest way in the place. Oh, then uh, we have only the last submission. Mm -hmm. By Mr. John. Thank you, John, for being my patron. My channel is demonetized, so all of you who have sent me questions in this video, Very all nice. of you have helped me get to the point where I am today, and this channel is growing really hard. So, uh, the, the last two questions from John. Did you find it weird or anomal anomalous? That's, anomalous? That's a fancy way of saying weird. When you first saw your kid raising various insects, no, that's not weird. It's not weird at all. No. no I think so. uh, in the Netherlands, uh, one out of two people have a dog, one of out of three people have a cat. Well, we have a lot of moths, a lot of moths and butterflies. Two fish and a little parrot, a Senegal parrot, and also two very tiny birds, but that's it. Thousands of moths and butterflies. Yeah, thousands. Yeah, no, it's not weird at all. No. no. They're very interesting. Mm. Yeah. So the last yeah. question is, 
What is among um, your favorite among all the insects that your son has kept? I really love a blue morpho, just because of the metallic. Uh, I can see very good the blue, and also the luna. Oh yes, the, yeah, the moon moths. I think she yeah. likes them. Yeah, with uh, tails. Yes, I have yeah. a lot of moon moths. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like them? Even people yeah. who hate insects would probably like those. Well, a lot of questions and really nice questions. Thank you so much. Maybe there's uh, something that you want to tell my viewers. If any, if, if you want to, you don't have to. Well, you have now you had a round with questions to your mom. But maybe they all can do a wish. A wish? A wish that about things they want to see. See your film. What they want to see. Yeah, what... So just a demand on, Bart, can you film for me uh, and then name a butterfly, name a moth, uh, or perhaps how you feed some uh, moths or yeah, other questions, things that he has to film on demand, of course, in relation to the butterflies and moths, because it's more interactive then. I could, I could. Yeah. Yeah. Although there are so perhaps by forty thousand viewers. The, the problem with that is a lot of people ask for species I cannot get in captivity. That's true. Because what you can get in captivity is very limited. Yeah. There's two hundred fifty thousand species of moths and butterflies, yeah. and maybe less than one percent I can get in captivity. Yeah. Maybe if I had a budget to travel the world someday, yeah. then I could do it. But maybe we can make a Christmas video. Lots of requests I cannot do that. Yeah. Shall we make a Christmas video? When it's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. then. Sure. Okay. But uh, just maybe something in general to say to my viewers. I don't know. They're the people who, who made my channel, I guess. Well, uh, they're also the people that make you very happy. I guess so. so. Thank you for being there for all over the world. And thank you for having trust in this beautiful uh, passion of my son. And I hope to see you soon. Hmm. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Mom, for being on YouTube. Did you think it was scary? No, not at all. Not at all scary. Mm. You're with me. It's just YouTube, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. I, well, Thank I, you I all. thought you was going to be nervous or something. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm never nervous, no. That was it. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank That's you. the end. Yes, it is true. Me and my mom are going to cook something in this video. A traditional Dutch recipe that dates back to the 16th century. Erten soup, or also known as snert, is the Dutch version of pea soup. It is a thick stew of green split peas, different cuts of pork, celeriac or stalk celery, onions, leeks, carrots and often potato. Slices of rookworst, smoked sausage, are added before serving. The soup, which is traditionally eaten during the winter, is emblematic of Dutch cuisine. Today we'll show you how to make it. And now, me and my mom are going to the supermarket to make traditional Dutch soup, pea soup, also known as snert or erte soup. This dish is unfortunately not friendly for vegetarians since it contains a lot of pork meat and it's also a calorie bomb. Despite that, it's one of my favorite Dutch things to eat during cold days in winter. So as me and my mom proceed to go to the supermarket to get the ingredients that we need. Make it of dry peas. So we're on our way to the supermarket and we're going to do some shopping to make pea soup for YouTube. In Dutch we call it snert and it's a, a Dutch traditional kind of dish that we usually eat later in the year such as autumn or winter. It's basically made of the dried peas, is it? Yeah, dried peas. Yeah. Dried peas and we usually uh, add various meats such as pork and a smoked sausage called roodworst. I guess I'll have to show you. And I have to wear mouth masks because there's still a global lung virus pandemic. So uh, the government made it obligatory. I guess you'll see.
we need is some leaks. And some large carrots too. Rookworts or Dutch smoked sausage. And some knob celery, there you go. And of course some whole celery too. Some split peas, perhaps the most important ingredient for pea soup. A huge chunk of smoked pork bacon is what we add to. And also we added some pork steak. Monster energy is optional, but it does boost your masculinity and intelligence, of course. Thanks, mom. Showing me how to do this. Cheers, people. It's a rare kind of video. Here you go. Now, here are our ingredients ready to be used for the soup. So, the first thing we do is we add water to a large pan, two liters of it, in fact. Next, we add the split peas to the water and slowly boil it. Make sure to wash the peas first before boiling them. Next, we add the pork steaks to the water where they will slowly boil and then you can add some salt. The next step is to chop the leeks up to smaller pieces. Wow, I can't believe my channel has grown so much I'm filming my mom cooking. Anyways, cut up the leeks and when it's finished you can add them to the soup. Next, we chop up some of the celery that we managed to obtain into smaller pieces. Now here's a fun fact. For this soup, we use two parts of the celery. We use the knob or the tuber, but also the stems. Yes, that's a lot of work. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that Dutch pea soup or snert is a recipe that dates back all the way to the 16th century? Yes, Dutch people have been eating pea soup for over 400 years. The recipe was a convenient way for farmers to use all the spare parts of an animal they otherwise threw away, like the ribs and the legs of pork or perhaps unused vegetables. It was convenient for farmers in the 16th century to add so many ingredients to a single pot and slowly let it cook while farmers had to work the land and return home in the evening for an easy meal. Add the celery to the pot and now we've begun cutting up the carrots and the potatoes. Oh man, if this channel wasn't about butterflies and moths I would almost show you more Dutch foods. Or wait, maybe I can if we hit more subscribers as a celebration. As long as it doesn't distract me from my main content. Hey, if you ever visit the Netherlands, 
You'll notice this soup is very popular here, however it's mainly eaten in winter. It's good at keeping you warm. It's also possible to buy an instant version of it at the supermarket that tastes mediocre, but it doesn't take hours of preparation at least. Yes, we've added the potatoes and carrots, and now the soup is starting to boil, so we stir it a little bit. And now we let it boil for 45 minutes. Time to wait, I guess, and stare out of the window to see the dreadful Dutch weather. After 45 minutes, take the pork steaks out of the soup, which are now boiled soft and tenderly. Why? Well, I'll explain that later. First we add new ingredients too, we add the smoked pork bacon and the smoked sausage. In Dutch rookspek and rookworst. If you like, add some pepper too. The reason we are now cutting the meat is because we want to reduce it to little pieces. It has slowly been boiled inside the soup, giving some of its meaty flavors to the soup and making it very tender. Once the meat is tender, you can remove it and cut it to smaller pieces before adding it back to the soup. Boom, there you go, and now stir. After boiling it again for a while, we repeat the same trick with the smoked sausage and smoked pork, which have now been boiled to the point of being tender. Unfortunately, if you are a foreigner, it's hard to get these ingredients since often this type of smoked sausage is typical for the Netherlands. But it's commonly used to make this soup, so it's very hard for you to cook something that tastes remotely similar unless you live in the Netherlands. And then we add all of it back to the soup. Yep, we're doing the same with the smoked pork, cut it up and then add it back to the soup.
The soup is supposed to be very thick. And once it is ready, dinner is served. There you go. You've now seen how we make Erton soup. Since winter is coming, we're probably going to eat this more frequently. I hope you enjoyed my unusual video. Soon we'll be back to the insects. But now you know some of the things that I eat. Ha! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, my YouTube channel is mainly about butterflies and moths, which are my big passion. And that's what my YouTube channel is about. I want to make a positive difference in this world and promote the study of insects and educate people around them, which I believe will have a positive impact on the environment. So this video, the one that you saw today, was a bit unusual. and has little to do with the type of content I usually make. Now, I do have to say, I like to keep my friends, my relationships and my family are three things that I like to keep a little bit private. So on my YouTube channel, you don't learn much about my private life. I mean, I share everything with you that relates to my insects but I don't share with you what I do in my free time, the people I hang out with, my family, my sister, my father, um, stuff like that. Dating, relationships, I don't like to talk about it on YouTube. However, I do like celebrating milestones and 20,000 subscribers is a big milestone to me. I never would have thought my channel would grow this big. And there is a chance that in the future it can grow even bigger. And therefore I have voluntarily decided to share with you a small part of my private life, which is an interview with my mother. I'm going to ask all of you. On YouTube you get weird comments sometimes. Hey, and I don't care if you call me fat, if you call me ugly, if you call me stupid or lazy. But this video has my mom in it, so I am hoping that people will keep it a little bit respectful. Jokes are okay. The good news is my YouTube channel has very little haters and 99.9% .9 of the comments I get under my videos are positive and supportive. Uh, I'm just a little bit nervous because it's my mom's first time on YouTube. I don't know how people are going to react, but please be nice to her. I would also like to thank all of my sponsors and patrons. As of today, my YouTube channel is still 100% demonetized and not supported by YouTube. When I upload a video and people click on it, I don't make a single dollar. Whereas other YouTubers, they make money when people click on their videos. That makes it hard to be an independent content creator. But thanks to the donations I get online, which is crowdfunding, I am able to run this channel and invest a lot of my free time in this insect show so uh, for which I say thank you to everybody who contributed and having you submit questions to me is my way of repaying you giving you the privilege of asking my mother a personal question that's one of the things I offer in return to my patrons to sometimes participate in events like these consider it to be a thank you oops my haircut is terrible I should get it fixed don't you think 
Anyway, consider subscribing to my channel, consider becoming a sponsor and I hope to see you next time. Right now it is winter so until um, spring we have to wait if you want to see some really good insect videos. Unfortunately it's not a great time for insect right now but I'm making big, big preparations for next year. See you guys and thank you for donating. Bye bye. Yeah.